Hey, good morning. Good to see you again. And uh, today we're in John chapter 17, the prayer of Jesus uh, before he went to the cross. Last week we talked about Jesus pray for himself, pray that God will glorify him because he submit to his salvation plan. He's going to the cross as the Lamb of God to sacrifice for our sin. And it's a very hard job for Jesus Christ, who know nothing about sin and who is the giver of life, a source of life, and he even need to die and need to uh, be just uh, judged a sin uh, for our sins. So, but he willing to do it. And then he continued to pray for uh, the 11 around him, the early church. Um, and then he'll even pray for us, the believers who come to know him through the ministry of the church in the centuries. So why don't we uh, pray again? Lord, we pray for your blessing as we turn to the Bible. Is your word, your revelation, your living word that give us life. And it, you said the word is your spirit. And we don't see you now on earth, but your inspired word, the Holy Bible, is our uh, revelation from God. So give us a teachable heart and soft heart to understand your word and be comforted and be encouraged. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, let's uh, turn to 17, John 17, verse 6. Let's read 6 to 18 first. 6 to 18. Got it? Let's see, you want to read for me, please, mm -hmm. the whole thing. I have revealed you to those who you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all that you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, mm -hmm. and I am coming to you. The name you, Holy Father, the name you gave me, so, so that... Mm -hmm. Holy Father, protect them. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me. So that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture will be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have, have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them. For they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is true. As you send me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Thank you. It's a prayer of Christ, uh, the, the longest prayer Jesus uh, of Jesus being recorded. Um, here he poured his heart, and they, he prayed in front of them because Jesus wanted to establish faith in among the believer, among the apostles, to keep them strong so that they can continue the. Tremendous task in front of them. Even many of them lay down their life for Jesus in order to testify for the Lord. So he cared about them and he prayed for them and wanted to help them to be strong. Uh, Jesus prayed for Peter before he stumbled. Peter has a heart, had a heart for God, but he didn't know his limitation, his weakness. Jesus already predict 
he will deny me three times in photo. Uh, uh, he will deny me three times. So Jesus said, but I pray for you. Uh, Satan want to shake you. But when you return, when you come back, establish you of your brothers. So Jesus here prayed for us, pray for the disciples, apostles, and uh, he didn't pray for the world because he's basically contrasting this group of people belong to him, they belong to God. And the world described as rebellious and uh, hostile to God, choose not to come to God. So it is contrasting the, the believers and the non and those who reject God. So that's why he said they are his. Uh, you no, know, Jesus prayed for us. Uh, in Romans 8, also, Paul said, Jesus intercedes for us in heaven. And then, um, when, G when we pray, we know God answered prayer. And he, his hand extend and perform things that beyond our strength and ability. That's why they, in many things we, we pray to God, we believe God can do something we cannot do. And uh, first John remind us when we pray in God's will, he will listen and also to uh, answer our prayer. And who is more obedient than Jesus Christ. When he pray for us, he pray in God's will and pray for our, our needs and health. And that prayer is not just words. That's protection. That's help and strength. Uh, there are many praying for me. I, 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 there are people may pray for you too in the prayer meeting every second uh, and fourth Sunday. I mean, uh, third Tuesday, the church has prayer meeting online. I encourage you to come. Uh, there are people. You may not know, but they are praying for you. Uh, I was in a group, and to my surprise, they assigned people to pray for the English group. And that kind of surprised me. Uh, they assigned one person to pray for English groups, a person to pray for Mandarin. I mean, all kinds of prayer requests. People pray for even us. And... Uh, Many times I feel God's protecting me and give me strength. And I believe many people praying for me as a pastor, as a brother in Christ. And I, I learned to pray for you more and um, not just uh, uh, force you to eat, <laughs> you losing my own human strength. Uh, many times I'm in prayers very important uh, before we do any ministry. Well, Jesus pray for you and, and that's God is continuing his work even if he's in heaven. So I said, he are, we are in his plan. We're in his plan. When he pray for us, sometimes we stumble. We've gone astray. But when God pray for us, he stands his help. Sometimes when I'm lost, God use the passage, kind of shine on me so bright that, oh, I'm in the wrong path. I need to turn around. Those kind of intervention for God. Because God loves us and cares about us. He has a plan. He prays for us, so sustaining us. We are in his plan, and you will submit to him. We are in his care. Sometimes we are needy. We pray. He asks our prayer. When we are in danger, many of you guys, surgery, other problems, family problems, struggles, pray for me. Remember those times. God was faithful and carry us through those troubles. 
with his mission. Jesus later said, I sanctify myself as a sacrifice, as a Passover lamb from the Old Testament to, to redeem you so that you can be sanctified too. And he said, you, you are being sent to the world. That's why he prayed for us. We are not all of the world. There was Jesus didn't rapture us right away after we believe in him. We still remain in this world. How many of you have been Christian? 20 years? 30 years? Was it not time to go home yet? Yeah, we're looking forward to that. But when God remained you on earth, as in John 17, he has a purpose. He sent us into the world. So, and he prayed in this prayer that Holy Father protect them and protect them. Not to, verse 15, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but you protect them from the evil one. So it's God's will that you, the disciples, are in the world, sent by Christ to share the gospel. And it's today, 21st century, we are redeemed by the Lord. We are remaining here, sanctified, and witness for Jesus Christ. That's his will. So we are praying for, we are in his plan, we are in his care, in his mission, and in his protection. And uh, be of good cheer as Jesus comforted the disciples. Don't be intimidated, scared. No one can separate us from the love of Christ. Then he talked about ownership. Now we are his. We are not the world. The world definitely in this chapter and in many places in John, the world is the fallen world. The, the system, the value controlled by the spiritual power behind it. Uh, uh, Ignorance about God, rebellions against God, um, and but we are living in this world. Uh, that's why there are always conflicts. There are always uh, people. Um, I mean, we we have to be. I mean, it's not an easy task to be to live as a Christian in a world uh, without God's help, right? Uh, we wish the world is more perfect, uh, less temptation, um, less uh, uh, thing that's uh, against God. However, we are, we do. It's God's will that you're in the world, but you are set apart. You, the in terms of nature and uh, affiliation. We are God's children. We are not Satan's children anymore. We're God's children. So we are asked to walk in God's will instead of walking in sin, right? Separated from the sin. Um, and also, we worship the Lord. Sunday, we don't go to a Buddhist temple or we don't worship idols. We worship the Almighty God. By nature and affiliation, we are his children. We are chosen, the Bible said. We are called out to be his children. The word church in Greek means being called out by God. Being called out. You are bound by God. God called you out of darkness into the light. Uh, that's important because just like the particle son, when he messed up his life in his despair. He thought about, I'm my father's child. Why am I here? So messed up, wasted all his wealth and messed up my life, eating pig's food. I'm his child. I belong to my father. I should return to him. So that's the big difference in your life on earth. When you know your, I mean, where you are, who you are, you are a child of God, you belong to God. So you don't belong to this fallen system. When the world chase after all these things, all the um, pleasure 
of the flesh, all the greed, um, all the hatred, all the bad stuff. And you, when we participate in it, we may enjoy this, the pleasure of sin for a little while. But one day, you, the Holy Spirit will tell you, you don't belong here. You don't belong to this kind of activity. You don't belong to this valley. Come out. Come back to the Father. That's where we belong. We belong to the Father. We don't belong to this fallen world of sin. And he prayed for protection. Jesus prayed for God's protection. Uh, verse 11. He said, Jesus, I will remain in the world no longer. He's living to be glorified, exalted in heaven. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. If not now, one day in eternity. But he's leaving. That's for sure. Well, he's, he said he will send Holy Spirit to continue his work. But physically, he will not be there for them. And all you have is mine, and the glory has come to me through them. He said, expect the disciples to glorify him. I will remain in the world no longer, but you are still in the world. All of you still in the world. And I'm... Uh, Sorry, I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are. While I was with them, I protect them and keep them safe by the name that you gave me. None of them has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so the scripture will be fulfilled. So except Judas, all of them walk in God's word. Verse 18, uh, verse 15. My praise, not that you take them out of the world, but you protect them from the evil one. Uh, so we are prayed for, for protection. So when God pray for protection, He's praying in the center of God's will. Will God, will God answer him? Definitely. The Father will answer the Son's prayer. So he is protecting you. All of us. Sometimes we take it for granted. And sometimes after the danger, we forgot about God's love and protection. But God is protecting you today. But let God protect you in his umbrella. If you run away from him, even he protect you, you are more vulnerable to attacks. But God will call you back for sure. But the fact is he's, you're under his protection, spiritual protection, even physical protection. Um, Um, I think you must have your story to share. Uh, I have one. One time I was driving to Chicago from here to the seminary. Uh, I remember this uh, deacon was praying for me, road safety. I was too excited about finding Chinatown, thinking where to get good food later when I lived there. But I was care kind of checking, oh, where's Chinatown? But there's a car in front of me. Uh, I think the engine died or something. It's like the, the light is so deep. It's like, like 20 miles per hour. And I was driving like 65, 70, something like that. I was uh, looking, uh, you know, just like sometimes you look around. <laughs> <laughs> but, but praise the Lord, at the right time, I look back. Oh, there's a car right in front of me. So I slammed on the little brick and turn. I miss it by inches. Woo! And I praise the Lord. Wow. It would be tremendous, I mean, and terrible before you start the seminary, you, you're in the hospital or something. Uh, God's protection. And Jesus later pray for them that they should be sanctified. Sanctify them by the truth.
Okay, he said, um, we're 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of it, sanctify them by the truth, the word is true. As you send me into the world, I've sent them into the world for I'm for them I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. And it, 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 this word sanctify means set apart for God. In strictly speaking, in the spiritual sense, set apart. You know, in the temple, any vessel used for God, for God, uh, worship, and even uh, a spoon or any utensil are called holy or called sanctified, set apart, because that is set apart for God's use. That That's the one of the meanings of this word, to set apart, not for other use, but for God's use. Samuel is sanctified, set apart for God's use. Um, but later, I mean, also it carries moral, moral um, meaning. If God is holy, God hates sin, and we are set apart for him, we also live in the same moral standard God has for his children. So that's uh, also, there's two meanings. So you are set apart for God, you belong to God, you're for his use, for your, he is your father in heaven, and we are to live a holy life, to be, uh, live a sanctified uh, holy life for him. So that people can see Christ in the church, in his people. Next slide, please. So let, let us uh, have a, see a few passages about sanctified. Being sanctified, what does it mean in the scripture? So God, I mean, if Jesus prayed for, to the Father that he will sanctify us by the truth. What is the truth? Your word is true. God's will, God's revelation is, is the word, the truth. So as I gave the illustration earlier, when I'm lost, many, many times the Bible Get, steer me back to the right path. How, when my heart turned against God, the Bible spoke to me. The Holy Spirit convict my heart, and I turned back. Oh God, I'm wrong. What a shame I am. I help me. I repent. So even the preacher is preaching God's word. That's why his word become message of God. Not that. That guy is any smarter than you and me. It is the word of God that's uh, God sustained and, and protected and remain in your hand. How precious the Bible you're holding. There are many, many lives laid down for God to protect this Bible and read it. It is love letter and guide, guideline for your life. If you don't read the Bible, you can be very lost. So I pray for myself and yourself and you because that's a that's a benefit of reading the Bible, not just to know God a little bit more, but your life being sanctified a little bit more. Every time you read it with your heart, he will tell you what is the best way to live was to how to be blessed by him walk in the center of god's will how can god not bless you right so be sanctified by the truth of god the word all jesus called himself the truth too so all jesus represented and his words and his teaching as we record in the bible will sanctify us so if you obey them revelation 5 9 that's to uh, have some participation. William, you want to read it for me, allow it, please? Revelation 5 9. Revelation 5 9. And then they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchased from God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. Right. You were purchased with a price. The Bible said it's through the blood of Christ you were purchased. You owe, we owe God. God purchased us back. All the debt we owe him by his blood. We are purchased 
from every tribe and language and people and nations, it's not just for the Jews. It's for every nation. It's God's plan. And first Corinthians, how about Leslie, the, the lady, uh, 6, 19. Thank you. First Corinthians 6, 19. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were brought at, you were bought up at the price, therefore other God is your body. Right. The, this chapter talk about uh we are, we are God's temple. You are God's temple. And um, and you bought with a price. That's why honor God with your bodies. Uh, in the context of our sexual sin. I said, honor God with your body. Because you are set apart for God. Not with a, without cause. It costs God tremendously. You purchased, you bought, paid through Christ. So live as God's children, not as the world. Um, and then let me read First Corinthians six eleven. And this is what some of you were living that kind of lifestyle, but you were washed. Oh, praise the Lord, sanctified. Set apart and also justified. Hallelujah. I mean, not all sins are forgiven, justified. You're right with God again. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. That's the gospel. We were lost, but now we're washed, sanctified, and justified through Jesus and by the Holy Spirit. That's the gospel in a nutshell. Deuteronomy set apart the Lord for the Lord your God, every firstborn male of your herd and flock. What? To sacrifice, to offer to God's gift, as I pray in the offering, to remind them everything we, we receive from God. So honor the Lord, set them apart, the first food, first male of herd and flock, offer to God to honor Him. That's set apart. It's the, it's this word set apart. It's you, that's not for other use. Don't break to the market to sell it. Set that animal apart for God's glory, for God's to worship God. And Jesus Himself set apart for that purpose. He came all the way from heaven, pour out His life to live as a man, to represent you and me, to die on the cross for our sins set apart for that purpose. First Peter 1, 13. Therefore, with mind that are alert and fully sober, don't like a drunk person spiritually, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you. When Jesus was revealing at his coming, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desire you had when you live in ignorance, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. It is written, be holy because I am holy. And uh, fundamentally, we belong to God. We are set apart by God, washed by him, justified by him. So live continuously in that protection, in that grace, in that love. And we stumble, yes, but may the Lord Convict our heart, protect us, keep us clean, keep us presentable to Him. And uh, day by day, is by the grace of God, we can do it. And Jesus is praying for us, help us to be obedient. Next slide, please. Okay, let's see, let's finish it up. Uh, mm -hmm. This chapter. My prayer is not for them alone, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me, and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. 
Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known that to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Thank you. Jesus said, said a new commandment is that you guys love each other as I have loved you. If you love each other, the world will know that you are my disciple. And here he said, if you guys are united as one, as me and my father is one, you guys follow this pattern and be united, the world will know you, God has sent the son. It's like, it, it's like a evangelism, uh, a, a, a character of an evangel, evangel, evangelistic church is a love and unity among the, the, the Christians because we are, have a common ground. We are all purchased by God. We, are, we were sinners. We were now purchased by God. And we are um, to call, call to obey him. And one of the uh, ways to obey God is to share, to testify for Christ among our friends and neighbors and in our workplace. Unity. We all share the same life, salvation from God through Christ. And we are one in the, as the Father and and was and is one with the son. And uh, the the opposite, you will understand what how important it is when you think of the opposite, where the church is divided, we everyone hate each other inside the church, everyone uh, everyone is like not loving each other, uh, criticizing and uh, full of uh, like we're hostile atmosphere. Do you want to? As a non-Christian, we walk into the church. I think they can smell it. They can, they can feel it. Something wrong with this group of people. And, and definitely not the, a way to glorify God. So Jesus prayed that the church will be loving. Jesus prayed that the church will, like, will follow his love, follow God's love and follow God's, um, and be united, unity. So we pray that even the local church is full of unity and we have to learn to have fellowship with our other brothers and sisters. As long as they're not cults, they're not having wrong doctrines of extremely bad uh, associate with them and proclaim Christ together. And then it talk about Jesus and other thing is praying is our final destination our final destination our final destiny of believer father verse 24 i want those you get given to me to be with me where i am and to see my glory the glory that you've given me because you love me and before the creation of the world and that's jesus prayer he said, I want you, Father, to give me all this that you have given me to be where I am. Remember Jesus said, in my Father's house, there's many mansions, many rooms. I go to prepare a place for you. And I will come to take you there. So as when Christian die, we're going home. We are literally, we go back to see the Lord and reunite, be united with him. He prepared a place for me in heaven. One day he will take me there and you too. And that's what he's praying. Where we'll go after this life. The disciples, both of them die for him. But he will see them and see his glory when they enter eternity. And... Uh, that's comforting. Not just uh, in shame, but to see Jesus' glory, eternal glory. We talked about glory last time. But one day when we leave this world, we'll see his glory. We will see how amazing this God is. How wonderful he loves us. How much he sacrificed for us. 
and how glorious it is a place in heaven that we'll spend eternity within. We're all looking forward to that day. In the consummation, we'll be united. we united with God, our maker, in his everlasting love. Jesus is praying that they will one day, one day understand God's love and when he is reunited with them in heaven and then he would, they will see his glory. So be rest assured, you are prayed for by the Savior. And when he prayed, God answered, and he prayed, he is taking action. Let's take a look at the finishing slide. This passage, you all familiar? Is that more than conqueror, you guys all say, I'm um, victors in Christ Jesus. Yeah, the, it's the attack, is fears, the temptation everywhere. But we are, but the gospel, the, the biblical truth remains the same today, tomorrow, and until eternity. Uh, basically, we talk about God's protection, and here, well, Paul again reminds us God's protection. Verse 31, what then shall we say in response to this thing? If God is for us, who can be against us? Underline that in your Bible. If God is for you, for you, for, for his children, who can be against us? And who did not spare his own son and gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? When you have the greatest gift of salvation, do not worry too much about other details. He has given you the biggest gift. Will he not also take care of you? Is that even your hair be counted? Who will bring any charge against those who God has chosen? It's our sin. But he is God who justifies us. Who then is the one who condemns our sin? Oh, no one. Because Jesus Christ, who died, more than that, was raised alive, and he said the right hand of God is also interceding for us, praying for us. Oh, that's the victory. That's the name. That's the proclamation. Done deal. We are set free by, by the blood of Christ. Yeah, we still have many sins today and tomorrow and down the road. By the Lord's grace, first is forgiven. Second, he continues to sanctify me. So pray, Lord, teach me, lead me every day so I can walk in your light. He's praying for you. Who he will separate us from the love of Christ? So trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, a sword. Let's skip the first seven. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither present nor the future, nor any power, neither height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. That is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Paul said it all. And we just trust this passage. Put it in our heart. Go on to it. Walk with the Lord every day. And you're in safe hands. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you because you didn't start the salvation plan and leave, leave us alone and just look at us and see us struggle. Oh God, you started something and you continue. And you will continue and lead us all the way until we arrive in heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love and grace and your protection and your sanctification in our life. And you have charged us for your mission. So help us more and more to, to walk in that. And um, Father, we pray for each other and we are called to be united in you. Is there any uh, strive any uh, Anything that is uh, hindering us to have genuine God's love among us and, uh, and fellowship, Lord, cast those things away so that we as a church can glorify you in unity and in love in Jesus Christ.
So bless your children, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. 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 Okay, we have lunch together.